social media did not create this volatile political environment. It was well on its way for those of us with memories of the 90s and the early 2000s, pre-Facebook and Twitter. This was well on its way. It certainly has been an accelerant, but, 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 but has certainly not been a cause. Um, and I think this debate is going, to go, is going to go on and on. I think Elon Musk certainly plays into it, but um, I'm always struck by some research uh, that I read a few years ago, which found that if people perceive that their ability to speak freely is being constrained, they tend to backlash even harder politically. Uh, a nice experiment in the social sciences which found that if people feel their communication is being shut down by politically correct norms, they become much more likely to backlash. And if we're not careful, that's basically where we end up, right? That mini experiment is telling us a lot about global politics, which is why, personally, I'm a big supporter of uh, places like Unheard and why I think probably Aaron and I have actually a lot of things um, in common in that I think we can all feel that the public square is becoming a little bit narrower, quite um, stifling, uh, dogmatic, quite shrill, um, and very moralistic. Uh, and I think that that is actually going to play into the populist mood. Uh, they don't need immigration anymore, actually. Uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen talked about communism and they talked about you know, uh, the Holocaust. They don't need those issues in, in that sense. They, they've got free speech, right? They've got cancel culture. They've got, um, um, they've got these issues around uh, expression. Uh, and I think that that too actually cuts across left and right just as powerfully. Um, and just lastly, um, on Eric's point about um, the taboos eroding, I do think this is very important. I mean, Dan Stone's book, uh, Goodbye to, to All That, which came out a few years ago, I found very convincing in that he argued that the key point about Europe today is actually the social norms that were once there in the 50s, 60s and 70s are actually now rapidly eroding. Uh, and you saw that with the French election, you know, when you have 25 year olds, 30 year olds, young women actually, especially, uh, voting for Le Pen, you realize that the power of being accused of uh, being a racist, being a Nazi. Uh, Ivan Krastev has made this argument powerfully, I think, uh, this week in saying that Ukraine has in some ways eroded the taboo of Nazism because we're now talking about Nazis in today's world, in being in Ukraine. However misleading that claim is by Putin, we're now talking about Nazis in the sort of here and now. And Ivan's argument is essentially that too is contributing to the erosion of these taboos in our public domain. Uh, and I suspect outsiders will end up being partly the benefit of that. Um, tribal loyalties breaking down and um, who follows Macron and how does he entrench his succession? I mean, these are all open questions.